Hi, and welcome to Holland Estates. I'm Susanna Popovic Montag, and you're listening to episode 636 of our podcast. Today, Ian and I are pleased to have with us our good friend and colleague, Jordan Ayton, joining us for the second part of our discussion with Jordan. Jordan is the co founder and CEO of Estate Planner, and we're very happy to have him come back to join us and to describe his wonderful software program. Welcome, Jordan. Uh, thank you, Susanna. Great to be here. So, Jordy, we missed, we've finished off our last podcast talking about the planning steps. Today, we just want to cover off, uh, in general, the planning steps that you want to consider uh, through the Estate Planner tool and just some of the document generation that is available with the program. Sure. So this is really the, the, the key element of Estate was to make the process better for the client as well as for the lawyer. And so um, this is the surviving spouse scenario. What do you want to do? You ask the client if your spouse is alive when you die. And you can see all of Homer's assets. Again, we're sharing the screen with Homer. So he's watching us build and we can, all of the assets are there and we can actually in fact show Homer a summary of what's gone on. So far, we haven't done any planning for Homer. So you can see there's some income tax and probate tax, et cetera here. Um, but we're gonna change that as we go and plan. And we have some sort of shortcuts. We, we've broken it down into joint and designated assets, initial gifts, legacies and bequests, and then the residue of the estate, the balance of the estate. And we have some shortcuts for those usual situations where everything is going to the spouse, for example. We can do that in a matter of seconds. Um, and I'll just do that for us. Um, <clears throat> and if we just click on one button, you can see that what Estate has done is taken all of the joint assets, all of the registered assets, all of the life insurance, and shown it to be part of Marge's disposition out of the joint designated assets. So it's moved all of those assets. It's also created one simple initial gift, which is the personal effects, all going to Marge, the wife, and then dealt with the residue of the estate. And in this case, quite simply, 100% is going to Marge. Um, and on the left, you can see that because of this planning, all of the income tax has been saved, for example. And we can even get fancy and show the client if we use multiple wills, would that save some more probate tax? So we'll click here. And sure enough, if we use multiple wills, we can eliminate all of the probate tax in this scenario. So that's the way the planning works. And this is kind of a simple approach, but we can break these the, the residue down into percentages or parts uh, set up trusts for, um, for the children, for example. And I'm just going to show you a, just an example of one of the more complicated uh, trusts we might create. This is for the children, and we want them to be treated equally. And we're going to put their inheritance in a trust. Well, the great thing about Estate is that for every gift, there's a built-in checklist. So you can go through who are going to be the trustees for the kids' trusts, in this case, the same as the executor. We've got the duration of the trust being age 25. We can even build in, for example, mandatory payments or staged lump sums that were very common. Let's just say as an example, we want to create a lump sum at 18 of a percentage of 25%. Well, sure enough, we can do that and we can add as many of those stages as we want. And of course, it provides for what happens if the child's not alive the gift overs and things like that. And so that's just a, a simple example of, of the kind of gift that you can create with Estate, which is from, from the simplest ones to the most complicated. And each gift has its own built-in checklists. All right, so Jordy, um, can you just tell us as well, with the variable that you have in the sense that you're, you've got these sort of shortcut cuts built in, what other shortcut options exist in the, in the program? We have all the common ones, uh, gifts to spouse, absolute trusts for spouses, trusts for kids, uh, gifts for siblings, all of those common ones. And in fact, you can make your own. If you have a kind of gift that you use all the time, you can create your own. And with one button, boom, you can create that gift. So you don't have to go through the whole um, 
but you can do all of these manually if you want to start from scratch and create them out from from uh, from from the beginning. And one of the great things about having the data and using technology is we can use all that technology to advise us. So just as an example, here are here are some warnings that we call them advisor insights that eState is sort of thinking along with us. It's looking at all of Homer's data and his planning and his assets and his family and saying to me, Jordy, um, look, you've just given a TFSA to a US citizen. That's a bit of an issue. Or look, you've got school-aged kids and yet you haven't, they haven't said that they have an RESP. Isn't, isn't an RESP possible here? Maybe we should plan for that. Um, you know, it's looking at data that we might have missed. It's looking at gifts that we might not have made to other people. Everything that we have to keep in our heads right now, the idea is that eState is going to remind us of those things. So we don't have to necessarily remember everything. If in case we forget, we're still going to be reminded. And each client has a different list of these insights. They're all based on the particular circumstances. Obviously, somebody is disabled here because we got warned about it. Bart is disabled in this example, and we didn't provide for that kind of planning. And so all of those kinds of things are reminded uh, to us. Um, and so we don't, hopefully don't make the same mistakes that we could easily make without it. And so the, uh, you've, you've managed to get the data from the client, you've managed to plan visually in front of them and show them with, with, with shortcuts even, quickly plan in, in the right circumstances. And then you've also considered where um, you can create some uh, unique uh, planning options through looking at their checklist and so forth. The final step of uh, eState Planner, though, is, is probably the piece de resistance. And that is, of course, what can you generate for the client? Because the lawyers have gone, the client's gone to the trouble of working up the data for you. You've checked it with the client. You've talked about planning. Now the lawyer has to step in. Right. So one of the great things, if you're familiar with the old process, you, the client left the meeting with nothing. Just a hope that you got down all the instructions. What I can do, Homer's watching as I built this out, but that, that's not even enough. What I can do for Homer is say, look, Homer, let me show you what your will's gonna look like. And this is generated as you saw with one click. And I can show in this, Homer, this is what's happening. If Marge is alive, a whole bunch of assets are passing outside the estate. And here are the initial gifts. And here are the, here's the residue. And if Marge is not alive in a picture, I can show them, you know, here's what we're, here's what we're doing. We've got this gift to the kids. Remember we had a mandatory payment of 25% at age 18. It's all summarized in this one picture. And it's really helpful for the client to, 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 to acknowledge what we've done and to understand what's going to be in their will. Uh, so that's certainly, you know, a powerful thing for the client and you can give it to them right at the meeting, right in that initial meeting. Now, this part, I don't necessarily show the client, but uh, I can generate everything that I've just done. I can generate it as a document and I'm going to just create a single will. I could easily in the same time create multiple wills, but I'm just going to create a single will for Homer. Um, and it takes about five seconds and I'm just going to generate that. And the great thing about eState is that it's, first of all, it uses Hull and Hall's precedent, right? So as a base, it's a fully editable document. So what we've done here is it's just a Word document. It's as if I had typed it all myself. And this happens to be Homer's a will. And you can see I've spelled all the names right. And I've got the beneficiary designation. And the great thing as well is it knows what clauses to include based on all of the circumstances. So for example, you know, if we had made a gift that was indexed, or if we had done a charitable gift or something like that, it would know which clauses to include. If we had appointed a trust company, it would have put in the trust company clauses for that particular trust company. So it's doing all the things that we have to manually do. It does it automatically. And so that's one of the great aspects of eState. And it's just, like I say, it's just a, a Word document that you can just type in whatever you like here, edit it, copy, paste. If you want have a specific section or precedent that you want to put in there or clause, you can do that. And the last thing that it automatically does, which is really helpful, is produces a will guide to uh, can go with the client to the client with the draft that explains what every paragraph does. And so it saves saves us time in explaining things that hopefully the client has at least looked at. And so that's really estate. It uh, 
it's very helpful in the sense that it creates a, you know, a, on a, on your typical situation, it's going to create a will that's 99% finished and it's going to spell all the names, right. And it's going to have all the right references and co cross references to paragraphs and all of that. Well, that's great. Susanna, why don't we uh, wrap up? Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Jordan, for sharing that. And you have always been a font of knowledge and uh, certainly East State is trying to capture that so that you can share it with others. I also commend uh, our listeners to the weekly webinars that uh, East State Planner hosts. And uh, Jordi, you run the Academy through East State Planner as well. And so just a font of knowledge for people who are if they're interested in it, it's always readily available. So thank you for sharing that with us and thank you for sharing your time. That concludes our podcast until next time. And Ian and I wanna thank you all for listening and Jordi for joining us. Should you have any questions, please email us at info at howandhold.com or contact us through our website directly. Thanks very much, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day.